Yo guys, I'll teach you everything you need to know about Gwyn, now let's get into it. So, first you're gonna go over the runes. You need precision, and the first thing you want to take is Conqueror. Conqueror is the best thing you can have on Gwyn. Afterwards you take Triumph, because it's really really good as well. I have tested out the mana as well, but it's not as good in my opinion. Next up you take Alacrity whenever you can get away with it. Alacrity is so powerful. However, there's times where you really need tenacity and you have to opt in for it. And in that case, just go for it if they have a lot of CC on the enemy team. The last thing you gotta take is, of course, last stand because last stand is amazing. The last stand, you do more damage when you're low on health and that works really well in Grin because you're going to be taking a lot of close fight. And this is just perfect for you. Next up, we have the second rune tree. What do you go for? There's two options, inspiration and resolve. So the first thing you wanna look at is biscuit delivery, also known as cookies. These are super amazing and they allow you to be a little bit stronger for those fights in the laning phase, which is super nice, of course. And then secondary, you take Cosmic Insight. Cosmic Insight gives you a lot of cooldown, which is good when you have an opportunity to push your leads and be more aggressive and fight the opponent at all times. Now, if you're in a more difficult lane and you want to have a little bit more sustain and you want to be more safe, go for Resol. In Resol, you want to take Second Wind if you're against pokey champions that hit you over and over, for example, a Jace, an Urgot, or other champs that are going to poke you all the time. But if you're against the Riven, you want to have bone plating so you can survive the all-in potential. So figure out, is the enemy going to all-in me or is it going to poke me over and over and over? And last thought, you want to have always Revitalize. Revitalize is super strong. It allows you to sustain and Gwyn is a healer. So this is perfect for her. Now for this small rune. Small runes are important. You want to have attack speed in the first one, always. Then you want to have adaptive force in the second one because more AD is great for you. And the last one, you take armor or magic resist depending on who you're against. Now, items are also super important. I'll teach you everything you need to know about those two. So, the first thing, you want to try and get Dawn's Blade if you can get away with it. If you can and you're against something where you really need to be defensive and you're really scared, you can have been for Dawn's Shield. Dawn's Shield is also alright, but it's not nearly as good and you're supposed to push your leads when you're playing Gwen. So, try and get Dawn's Blade and a potion if you can. Now, for your first base, there's a lot of good options. So the first I'm going to talk about is Dark Shield and Refillable Potion. This is a super good option if you're looking to snowball the game. If you're not looking to snowball the game, you don't need to buy this option. It's only for snowballing and when you think, oh, I can beat this opponent, I'm better than him, or I have a good matchup. So you want to push the lead and you want to get those stacks going. Then the other option is Bramble's Vest. If you're against a lot of healing, for example, they're sitting on a Renekton, or an Aatrox. Those two champs heal a lot and you want to be a little bit careful and you want to stop that healing and stop the bleed while also setting your jungle up for easier ganks. Get the anti healing and they're going to have a much harder time. Now for the first actual item that you always want to get is Leeching Leer. Leeching Leer is great because it gives you the exact stats that you need. And then you have boots as well. Boots are super important which is something you often want to buy early on Gwen. Generally, I recommend people not to buy boots early on most champions but Gwen gets cutted super easy and if you don't have boots, you're going to have a bad time. Then, obviously, you want to upgrade the Leeching Lair into Riftmaker. Riftmaker is your core item, and that's the first thing you want to get. Once you have Riftmaker, your next option is going to be Boots. Most of the time, you want to go Mercury Treads, because, again, CC is annoying for you. However, if they don't have much CC and you can get away with it, go for Lucidity Boots, because having more cooldown reduction is really broken and grim. It allows you to be much more aggressive, and your E cooldown is super low, which means you can spam your abilities. Now there will be some sad situations where you have to go plated steel caps, which is the ninja tab eyes, as they used to be called. Most people know them by. Those are the cases where you get a lot of AD and you just really need to survive because you don't have any tanks and you kind of have to work as a more tankier champion for your team. Now, once you have those core items, we got to look at what do you want to do next. Now, there's one thing you want to think about. Do they have a lot of healing and do we need anti-healing? In that case, you can go Oblivion Orb. This is obviously if you don't already have Bramble's Vest. Now, Oblivion Orb is great for you and is a really good item to help apply anti-healing for your team. Now, if you don't need anti-healing, go straight for Nash's Tooth because Nash's Tooth is the next on the list that you want to have. Once you got these core items, you have Rift Mega and Nash's Tooth, which is your entire build that you need. At this point, you want to survive. You want to be a surviving bastard. So what you do is you buy a stopwatch because stopwatch is broken in teamfights. And if you learn how to use it properly, it's going to be your number one item. Then after stopwatch, you're going to upgrade that into a Sonya's. Then you're going to get a Cosmic Drive. And last but not least, you're going to get a Rabadon's because Rabadon's, who doesn't want that? All right, now to teach you everything you need to know about Gwen's skill odds. The most important thing is you want to go E level 1. E is your number one ability for level 1 because you're so strong with it and you got to abuse it. Second up, you go Q. And then after, once you get to level 3, you're going to skill W. Now, once you have your core level 3 abilities for level 1, 2, 3, you're going to start smashing Q because it's the most important ability that you have. 
to max out. And then afterwards you max E and last but not least you're gonna max your W. Obviously all of this is for the knowledge that you're going to skill ultimate whenever you have the possibility. All right now I'm gonna teach you the most important Gwen tips and tricks that you will find. So the most important thing you need to know is Gwen is super strong level one and it's very important you abuse it. So I'll show you a game from high elo EO best right now and this is what you have to do. Try and abuse it. You wait out the sign show this one matchup. You jump behind him with your E and then you just start hitting him over and over and over again. You get out, and then you're ready for the next ability. You have an E back up, and then you go in on the second E, because now you have a lot of damage, and that's how you get the first kill. This is a really good way to do it. Now remember, then you hit after using your E ability, it goes lower in cooldown, which means you can use it again quicker, and you can set up plays like this. One thing the wind wants to use, and it's really good at, is abusing Conqueror. It's really easy to get stacks due to her E early, and she's one of the best early game champs in the game. Make sure you learn how to abuse it and make sure you learn all the small tips you need for that. Now let's talk about Gwyn's combos. It's really important you know about this. The first thing you want to know is auto attack E. If you auto attack, then you can reset your auto attack with E. Afterwards, what you want to know is before you use your Q, try and get an auto attack in on them, then Q, and then you auto attack reset during the Q, which means you should auto attack again after the Q. And then obviously you can time it in with your ultimate whenever you want to try and all in people and try and get those kills. This was a really unlucky time on high elo EOS where Cyan barely survives. But you see the absolute damage that Gwen can put out if you use those small little tricks where you auto attack reset your damage and you end up doing more DPS. Now there's one thing with the W that I want to showcase that I think is really important. When you're playing Gwen, what you want to do is look at this W. You use the W early and now he's using it also to deny the Cyan stun. What you can do here is, if you use it early to push people away from it, then you can stand on the edge as you see him doing here, and you can actually force fights where the enemy can't really use their abilities on you, which means you're pressing them away from it and you're having a much better time fighting your opponent and getting a massive advantage. So remember to use your W at the perfect times because it's really important, and if you're going into a T-fight, try and use it early because it will give you an advantage. Grin ultimate can be kind of hard to hit on. I see a lot of Grins using it and missing it. What you want to try and do is ultimate people that are locked, like this out of a jam, you can't do anything or ultimate people that are running towards you or as they're all attacking you because they're locked either in animation because they're all attacking you or they're running towards you which means a straight line which means you're going to hit them straight on if you're trying to ultimate people that are really far away and running away or running in circles it's really difficult and you have, and you have to be careful about wasting your ultimate all right here's a few combos that i haven't shown you yet that you also need to know they're not as effective as the other ones but there's still situations where you do want to know them and be able to utilize them the first one you want to know is qe so you can q and then e which means you can actually use your Q ability and damage further away, which you wouldn't be able to reach. Generally, this is not that great to do because you will be doing less damage already unless you're already hitting them with the initial Q. Like if they're standing here and they're jumping away, then you can follow up on them. Now, another thing you can do, you can also do this combo with the flash and you will still be able to do damage really far away. Again, this is something we have to be like, do I really want to do this? And this is something you only do when you're trying to finish off the opponents and not so much just because, oh, it's really effective. And also when you do these combos, you generally don't get to do the auto Q auto, which you often want to do, right? For example, mostly what I would do is I'd stack up my passive, have it at four stacks, then I auto Q auto as soon as possible. That's generally how you do it, especially if you hit the same person. Obviously you want to have your E activated doing these things, but yeah. 